Today, I did my second day of 30 minutes writing. Yeah. It was clearly less enjoyable than my first day of 30 minutes, yeah. okay. 30 minutes writing. That's how it was goes. More, this was more of the real experience. Um, yeah. It, and it was not difficult to keep going, but I had a few moments where I could just sense a part of me wanting to, let's open Slack or uh, get distracted and yeah, run away from yeah. it. And then there was one distinct moment just for a split second where there was an inner, almost like a little, a mini panic, just a, I don't want to do this anymore kind of a feeling. Mm -hmm. But it was still mm -hmm. very small. It was still in its infancy yeah. just for a blip, for a brief moment, I could feel it. And I thought, isn't this interesting? One of the interesting things about writing for me now as I'm making my first baby steps of attempting to play with it. I mean, I've written, I did some writing in my past, both on the Super Cool School blog and later when we started Close, I wrote a few small pieces yeah. and I did some ebook stuff back in the day and I did some, blog, some blogging, some write, a little bit of writing, right? In all kinds of fashions and right. forms. The first email course, I remember fondly. Yeah. And I could tell that I could get good at this. I have a knack for it. Mm -hmm. I at least think so, but I've never developed mm -hmm. it. And now when I attempt the type of writing that I'm even attempting, it's not even writing about mm -hmm. startups, sales, mm -hmm. business, or entrepreneurship, where, where yeah. it's more fictional yeah. writing. This is so far away from my comfort zone. I'm so far away from something I would recognize as good that it feels insurmountable in, uh, in like I actually had like this image of you in your first I don't know what it was Muay Thai lesson or something where yeah. a, a 12 year old kicks you and defeats you in the first training session yeah it is a harsh kick in the nuts your nuts being your ego which is where an ego could be placed appropriately mm -hmm. in the human body it would and make a lot of sense. It would make a ton of sense. And for we should me, do the anatomy of inner work. <laughs> say it again? We should, we do, should the... do the, the anatomy of inner work. Uh, the, yeah, we should well, place the ego different... is located in yeah, the nuts. Yeah, hey, this is not a bad idea. Out of all yeah. ideas we've ever had, this is not a bad yeah, one. Yeah. So learning to do something badly while enjoying it is a superpower. Yeah. Right? If you can do things poorly, but you're still yeah. having fun, that's amazing. That's an amazing yeah. thing to yeah. master and to learn. Something that very rarely do we teach this to anybody, especially not our children. We're trying to tell everybody to just have fun participating, but really the fun is in getting good at things, not in being bad at them. Where do we socially accept one person doing it clearly worse than all others around them and them being really happy independently from it? And for me, part of what made me maybe progress, oh, definitely, see... The, one of the benefits of being unreasonable in your expectations is that it might drive you to get better much faster, right? So I am sure right now when it comes to martial arts, I am not progressing at all, right? Mm -hmm. I train a lot less when I train. I'm much more relaxed. And so I would say that the last year I haven't really progressed at all. I had years where I progressed significantly, but I mm -hmm. took it much more seriously. Now, I'm having a better time now with it because when I go to train, it's mostly fun. And before, when I trained, it was some fun, but mostly, I don't know, self-imposed pressure to perform, to get better. I was very ambitious about it. At the same time, I always recognized and realized that I would never get good, really, truly good at it in the general, like, compared to people that are good, that are really good. Okay. And that's, that was a new feeling. Like I can work at this very, very hard and never get truly like great at it. I never mm -hmm. endeavored yeah. to do such a thing in my life. Like why would I, like I always, from a young right. age, would only want to put all my effort into something where I could truly become amazing at. Yeah. This is also and, a thing about just getting older because the, the amount of things yeah. that are like this are just growing, right? Yeah, because you're not fucking at 18 years old where you have 20 yeah. years to get good at it and still be not even 40. Like, 
Yeah, you and you have 20 years to complete it, and you have like 10 hours to do it a day versus, yeah. all, you know. You, you have, have responsibilities, you have life, you yeah, have work, yeah. you have children, yeah. you have shit yeah. to do. You don't have all day to dedicate to something. Yeah. Yeah. So in my martial arts journey, I had to go through discovering martial arts, falling in love with it, discovering this new dimension in my life with like something more physical. But then also trying to come to terms with the idea that I will never get great at it, but then truly not being at peace with it, right? And just still mm -hmm. judging myself and approaching certain things as if the expectation should be that I will, I have to get as good as people that do this professionally. Now with writing, yesterday I had some fun, but today when it was a bit more of a struggle session, I had a moment where... Ho I looked at the page and hopelessness looked back at me, you know, and, <laughs> I'm a bit and well, the hopelessness was you will not get great at this. You know, there's just not this, this, the distance between me and greatness on a piece of paper seems insurmountable in this lifetime. And this sort of a voice that said, maybe if you had started, you know, when you were 20, hmm. but now this is fool's gold you're chasing. This is, you're not going to get you anywhere. And I think we have the same asshole in our head. Oh, I think we're very similar with our inner critic to, to some degree. Yeah. Now you have found more effective methods of not listening to it than I have in some areas. I don't know. It's putting chocolate in your ears. I don't know what you did right, to, man <laughs> to manage it at certain times. I think we're, we're, who knows how, how we both manage this, but I do think that our inner critic is, they're definitely cousins, right? They're definitely, there's yeah. definitely a similarity there for sure. Yeah. They and, might even be talking to each other, you know, getting on a maybe, road. You know, worked really well to stop this motherfucker from trying this. <laughs> oh, I'm going to try that too. <laughs> Dude. And by the way, tell your one to stop saying trees. <laughs> what, what the fuck? You know, it could, could be, it could be that. Therein lies my challenge when it comes to the love of writing, for right now at least, is shaking off this leech that is trying to hold on to this approach that I need to get brilliant at writing, which I would love to be, right? This is yeah. the, that, part, yeah. that leech of me that says, well, wouldn't you love to? I'm like, I'd love to. Well, yeah. then come over here on our side, you know? Uh -huh. Join us in our views. I'm like, yes, but I really want to enjoy <laughs> in my time with writing and yeah. it's like you know enjoy schmoy like this is what do you care like let's just get great at it. Mm -hmm. like, no i really just want to have fun doing it and it's like that part of me is like what is the point of having fun if it doesn't lead to greatness and and then i today i was reading i'm now firmly in the flow of rereading the first dune book again i'm gonna finish uh, it no. quickly Right? I'm like yeah. in it to win it. I also had to do a quick break on Ara Kare Anna Karenina. Anna Karenina. Yeah. Because the person I'm reading it with has to catch up, you know, and I'm I'm just I, I can't wait around. Mm -hmm. That book I got into a flow. Like that book is another book that I could quickly yeah. finish. Right. But because I paused that and we had talked about Dune and rereading it and I'm in the same apartment where I really fell in love with it in Austin. And so I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool to reread it here, you know, where I first read it and kind of like, uh, there's a vibe that I can reconnect to. So I started rereading it and it took two or three attempts. I, at first I read a couple of pages and then I was like, eh. but now I'm, I'm flowing, right? I'm going to finish this fast. And now I'm also at the point where just the beauty of writing is presenting itself more clearly to me. Mm -hmm. And there's so many moments where I'm just in awe with the writing, the capacity to write this good, which then makes my own writing even worse, right? right? It just makes Amps it even the contrast. so much more terrible. Like I gave myself permission to write this little story that I was writing in kind of a, the simplest form possible and not question too much. Mm -hmm. And I did, and it was, it's fine and fun, but it is in one word, humbling mm -hmm. to be pedestrian at something you love so much. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's just like being truly 
pedestrian in it. And then that's, I think, why it's so difficult for people to keep learning at the same pace as children. Now, one big part is just time, right? That is not to be underestimated. We just don't have the time that children do. But the other part is obviously our inner parts and voices and egos and whatever you want to call it that stop us from doing and exploring things freely and wildly with recklessly right learning recklessly without wondering if what you're learning is good if you're learning fast if you're going to get if it leads to something what other people would think of it just following your bliss and your curiosity recklessly wherever it may lead and if you fall off some cliffs so be it you'll survive and you'll go somewhere else and roam around and we just don't have that anymore and the older you get the more your personality and your life becomes poured in cement right it's like it needs cracking to move it's just not flexible anymore it's not fluid anymore it's hardened right and set in stone set in its ways the more the older we get that's one part of it but the other one is also the more recognition we get for our strengths or our personality maybe it would be different maybe it's the same but it, on the flip side for people that get no rec- uh, recognition for nothing because they are lacking the confidence that they would ever be good at anything right maybe that's that challenge but i can also tell you from an from my perspective that since there are things that I've developed over many, many years and I'm really, really good at, it makes it more challenging at times to be really bad at something for me. Yeah. Because I have this really nice suit that's really, really comfortable. My back is not against the wall. It's not that I don't have any clothes and I have to wear this new stuff if, if, if I'm a little insecure about it. I have options, right? And I have things where everybody will look at me and go, you look amazing. So wearing something that is new and I feel awkward and it doesn't fit is seems even harder to me at times. And it reminds me of the first few months when I moved to the US. Mm-hmm. The hardest thing for me was how stupid I sounded all day long to my own ears. I had always been a great talker. I was always a great communicator. And in German back then, I was very persuasive and I was I sounded good to my own ears at least right and then I come to San Francisco and everything I'm trying to communicate is labored and awkward and choppy and I just sound a little goofy and a little dumb like like a simple person like somebody that's just not not really smart and that hurt like I remember I was trying to convince investors to raise money from or tell people to join my company. I'd constantly had to explain to people who I am and what I'm doing. And every day I was in emotional pain because I was thinking, well, I sound like a fucking idiot, right? No wonder none of these people want to do things with me or no wonder I'm struggling so much or this, you know, and it just was bruising my ego. I sound dumb. I come across as simple and dumb. I don't come across impressively i'm not charming i'm not charismatic that thing that was my gift the power that i developed in Mm -hmm. germany boom all of a sudden that superpower you know i touched kryptonite and now i was just a normal bloke with sunk with glasses on and i couldn't fly i couldn't laser eyes through buildings i didn't have superpowers anymore just sucked and it's similar here where and we've talked about this how difficult it is to do the inner work podcast because of some of those ego challenges this podcast to a degree is that sometimes when i listen to our conversations at times i think it's magical and it's art and it's in the moment something that was meaningful to me to us and at times i feel like jesus christ you're just like blabbering on forever and you're not getting anywhere and i would hate listening to this shit and you know this is not amazing content and that hurts my content heart because i had i've created and we have created content that i thought was pretty fucking badass 
in the past. But with writing, even more so. I mean, this podcast is a million times better than my writing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is, that is a, now you get an idea of what my writing is like. But um, learning to do this and remember while doing it why I want to do it, mm. not get lost in my ego, in my ambition, in comparisons to what I'm reading, to masters of this craft, because it's irrelevant, but do it for the pure joy and exploration. Do it to learn again something new, right? Independently of how good I'll get, independently of the, the final destination here, just in, find ways to enjoy the journey and be playful with it and not prideful is that it, that is the lesson and that is a big part of the scenery of this path right the things that are there to be observed and treasured and that make this a beautiful journey to go on and to endeavor on and that's tricky it's easy to say but it's tricky to do when as you write, and I think writing is so beautiful for me now, like today was nice because as I was writing, yesterday I was inspired. So the writing happened through my fingers. That's always nice if you're inspired and things just happen. I'm not saying that the writing was great, but it felt good writing. Yeah. Today, the writing wasn't inspired. And so everything was flowing more awkwardly. It had to be pushed. It didn't just... You know, it was not, not an opening to it. It was a laboring for it. And then as the laboring happened, maybe before or maybe part of it were these thoughts, these, this is uh, not going this well. You'll never get good at this shit, right? Uh, you should have never stopped writing when you were younger. It was much, much better if you had like just kept writing. And whatever it was, like all these kind of feelings and emotions, even just for split seconds. And those unpleasant voices, impulses, being able to stay steady and stay firm and not let them tip you over, not let them get you out of balance. One moment you're enjoying something, the next moment all it took was this small little impulse and you're off rhythm and now you're self-conscious and you're looking around the room and you think somebody is laughing at you and now you totally lost the plot when a second ago you were in the groove in the music lost dancing enjoying yourself it's that kind of like these little impulses that can have such tremendous ripple effects and this is in life not just when you endeavor to do something new it's everyday life we're waking up in the morning we're making coffee we're writing some emails and then there's something something challenging some little fear some doubt and then there's a little impulse a little emotion a little voice a word inside of us and it just ripple affects us completely into a different trajectory for the day sometimes a bad day with some bad decisions can lead you down a completely different path in life but i so it's so important for us to be present and listening to ourselves and inside to what are these impulses? What are these voices? Where does all this come from? Where does this all lead to? And when you do something new, like I am attempting now, where I say for 30 days, I'm writing 30 minutes every day, fiction, noticing those impulses and those voices and making it part of the practice is a beautiful thing. It's beautiful inner work if you have the presence to allow it to be. And today was fine. Like it was not magical, but it was also these voices and impulses didn't win, quote unquote, or didn't push me in a direction I disliked. I just noticed them. I acknowledged them and I continued. And it was also not a glorious victory where I turned everything around and made beautiful art and thought the writing was amazing. And then I was super proud of myself. I didn't get to that turnaround point, but I just kept going and now i've written for an hour in total in two days a fictional story and this might be the most fictional writing that i've done since uh, seventh grade hmm. that's kind of cool yeah 
And it's something that I wanted to do for at least six months now. I've been thinking about this. For six months, I've not been able to do it. I get. Mm-hmm. I wonder why. You know, I wonder, yeah. wonder what voice or what part of parts of me were ho- holding me back because it's not difficult. It's not difficult to have thirty minutes for something like this. It's actually fairly easy. But it's the emotions, the voices that are awakened within that might make this a really daunting task. Right? The ego, the fears, the pressures. I don't know. I enjoyed the last two days and I I am certain for the next 28 days I'll have 28 very distinctly different experiences every mm-hmm. single day yeah. right it's going to be a different challenge with different texture a different a completely different thing every single time for different reasons and I think that today I got a little excited about that I think that's going to be one of the coolest yeah. things about this whole thing is how wild this little journey can be if I'm just present for it yeah, that inner critic, that enemy within will always come up with a, try to come up with a new strategy. So, ah, yesterday I tried this, it didn't work. Today, let me try that. If you take the, the, the inner parts philosophy to this, one nice thing is that you don't think of these parts as enemies mm. that need defeating. You're just thinking of them as parts of you that are trying to protect you from something. What is that part trying to protect me from? Well... Maybe it's trying to protect me from embarrassment, doing something, being sensitive around it. You know, part of, we always say, oh, you know, be, let's be like children. Let's be childlike. Let's have childlike curiosity. Let's learn like children. Children are awesome. Children are this, children are that. But you know what children are as well? Sensitive. They're very, very sensitive at times. And when you endeavor into a new area where you're more unsure of yourself, but you love it and you do something in it, maybe I'll write something that I really love. Then I'll have the dilemma of, do I show it to somebody? And if I do, Mm -hmm. what if they don't love it as much as I do? Which most of the time they won't. Can I deal with this? I mean, you know this really well. I'm still waiting to see some of your writing. That's normal. But... If you think about that, maybe part of that, I mean, it's different for everybody, but maybe that voice that tells me you'll never get good at this, maybe it's just a part of me that is trying to protect me from embarrassment because it thinks I cannot handle embarrassment. And so this part maybe adopted the strategy of if I convince him not to do things that could potentially be embarrassing, then we'll be fine. We'll safe. And I really love that philosophy in IFS that even the quote-unquote worst parts of ourselves, the parts that say things and make us do things that we really don't enjoy, if we stay curious and try to understand what drives them, maybe they have underneath it all an actual noble intention, no matter how misguided the execution is of how, or the strategies of how they're trying to accomplish that. Maybe all they're trying to do is really just protect us. Right? If you think about it, me feeling a little shitty or lost or hopeless, right? That was the word that I used. Having a moment of hopelessness that I could ever get good at this. Why would I have that feeling? Why would that even matter? Why would something inside of me feel hopeless? Well, maybe because there's a part of me that wants to be hopeful. Because No, there's definitely a part of me that wants to hope and hold on to the hope that I could get amazing at this. This is the truth. To the outside world... I would always pretend I'm never going to get good at writing. And even if I wrote something that I thought was good, I would always downplay it and say, it's not really good, right? What is that? That's me trying to protect my ego and my, myself from the world. But there is a part of me that does hope, that wants to hope. Maybe by the time I'm 80, I'm going to be one of the best writers the world has ever seen. There's a part of me that just can't help itself is hopelessly romantic and ambitious and wants to be amazing at everything. It just wants to. And there's maybe this other part of me that wants to counteract that. Now, let's not get too much into writing. Let's not love it too much. Let's not work at it too much. Because what if that hope is really hopeless, right? What what if that's impossible to accomplish? And rationally, I would agree more with it's probably not going to happen. But emotionally, I want to still dream And so there's this part of me that's trying to protect me from those dreams because most of these dreams would end up hurting me, right? Thank God. Like, imagine this. I might still have a slight hope or thought that I might 
have a couple of fights in my life, right? Not professional fights, but just some amateur fights just to experience what it means to go into a ring and fight. There is still something inside of me that wants to do that. But now imagine if I actually thought I could become a world champion MMA fighter. That would be a dangerous dream to have for me because the chances are below zero and the consequences are very high. You know, the consequences of me getting seriously hurt and injured or doing really, making really bad decisions, if I fully committed myself to become a, a champion, would be high. So having that side that Christ tries to criticize you and hold you back from it, at times that, is, that, that, part, that part has probably saved a lot of people, especially a lot of men, if you consider that what is it, 11% of all men think they could win against the lion in a fight or something? <laughs> something crazy like that, <laughs> right? I mean, we're built as men to some degree to be delusional about our abilities, right? As humans, maybe more, more generally speaking, but you add more testosterone into a human and that propensity to overestimate their own abilities and underestimate the danger goes up, right, a lot. And so having that part can really can save lives, can really save people. And then think about all the people that in their late in their life are doing these crazy entrepreneurial investments and think they could build a multi-billion dollar company when everything they've done before was super small and never worked. And of course, we all want to, we all love the idea of the Ray Crooks or whoever, like the, 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 the people that got rich very late in life and that had all failure after failure, but they never given up. And in their 60s, they turned everything around, became successful. We love it. I love that. I worship that idea of human transformation, right? That it's never too late. But for most people, this is always going to be bad advice. Like at 60, you should not invest everything you've ever earned to do some crazy new entrepreneurial thing if you have zero experience in any of that. Going back to my main point, these critical voices or these evil voices or these inner enemies that want to stop us from doing art, from pursuing hobbies, from approaching this girl that we might fall in love with or whatever other beautiful thing that we romanticize, these voices might just desperate to protect us from what they deem the most likely outcome, which is a bad outcome for us. And when you think, when I think about those parts of me in this particular way, it feels better and it softens my inner wars. And that's helpful to me. I want less fight to get over that fear of writing. And I want more gentleness in that fear dissolving into the joy and curiosity of wanting to write. And more of that happens, more of the latter happens when I take a look at that feeling and that emotion and I'm, I'm not angry at it and I'm not combative towards it, but I go, oh, I get it. You're just trying to protect me. But let me tell you, I'm fine. I'm safe. I can do this. I can deal with this. This I do not need protecting from. Yeah, dude. Thanks. Uh, I was still, and I think I am still, but just by default, thinking about that in this way, where it's like, that's the enemy. So I want to I wanna fuck with it. I want to try that. Dude, I've, I've thought about all my inner weaknesses and insecurities always as enemies that I need it to crush mm -hmm. from my life. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, last year I had this realization that these insecurities and these fears and these inner critics and demons that we have, they're not our enemies that need to be destroyed. They're our little children that need to be raised and loved yeah. and paid attention to. And now this is yet another lens at looking at all the parts that I've only known as enemies, as things I need to combat. When I'm starting to write and I have doubt and I have hopelessness, like all I would have ever wanted is to destroy these feelings, to be like, yeah. no, you're not fucking going to win over me. And then in those battles, how many times did I lose? Many, many times. <laughs> many, 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 many times. Yeah. Yeah, I won sometimes as well, but I lost many, plenty of times. And every loss always came also with added shame. You know, if I started writing 
and then I felt a little hopeless and I got angry at that and I tried to force myself and I didn't, the next thing I would want to do is distract myself with something, mm-hmm. right? I wasn't just like, ah, well, didn't work. Let me do something else nice and productive. It didn't lead mm-hmm. to a path like that. I really can uh, only recommend to play with that inner relationship shift because so far I've been, I've been enjoying it. It's been generating very distinctly different results.